Hello everyone, welcome to the webinar JSON in MySQL and MariaDB databases. Uh, first of all, I hope that everyone is in good health. I hope that the morale is good. Um, we are living in hard times, but I believe that human beings are stronger than they think and uh, we all will will go through this and uh, this will finish. So anyway, I am new to this platform and uh, I would really, really appreciate if uh, someone can give me a feedback in the chat and uh, tell me if the audio is good, if you can hear me, if you have any other kind of problems I can help with. Uh, okay, I read that the audio is perfect. Great. Thank you, Carl. So, mm, I want to tell you from the beginning that the webinar is um, about, first of all, understanding uh, the use cases of using JSON in MySQL and MariaDB databases. Well, actually, more generally in relational databases. And then exploring the JSON-related features in MariaDB and MySQL, uh, which possibilities they give us. But it's not a tutorial about the basic uh, syntax or the basic functions to use, uh, because they are pretty easy to learn, and you can find them in the wonderful MySQL manual or in the wonderful uh, MariaDB knowledge base. Or you can also Google for my name, followed by working with JSON arrays or working with um, JSON uh, objects. So anyway, um, if you have questions during the webinar, please write them um, not in the chat, but below. If you scroll down, you will see that there is a space to uh, write your questions. If there is time, as I hope, I will answer the question at the end of the webinar. If there is not time, um, I will still answer the questions, but I will do it probably later today or tomorrow. So stay tuned because you will finally see an answer to your thoughts. Um, also, um, these slides contain um, a lot of examples. Uh, don't worry, you will find the slides online after the webinar uh, on SlideShare. And you will also find um, on, this, on this same platform, you will find the recording of the webinar. So we can, uh, we can start. Well, first of all, a couple of words about me. Uh, I am a database consultant. I mainly work with database, uh, relational databases, um, open source ones. Um, my experience with databases started in the year 2000. Uh, since then, I've covered several roles, always related somehow to databases from development, but it was at the very beginning of my career. Later, I've been a DBA uh, and a consultant and a DevOps. Um, in, just in case someone is curious, my surname is pronounced Razzoli, uh, but uh, I understand that this sounds very unnatural for anyone who's not Italian, so feel free to pronounce it uh, as you prefer. That's it, we can actually start. So let's start talking about uh, JSON support in MySQL and MariaDB. Uh, support for JSON was added in MySQL 7, uh, which has a proper JSON type and uh, several JSON functions as well as other features that we will discuss um, during the webinar. Uh, MariaDB 10.2 implemented JSON as an alias for the type long text. Uh, so basically, uh, you create JSON columns, but they are actually long text columns. They contain strings. And actually, in 
the version 10.2, they could contain any string. Um, from the version 10.4, um, it is a bit more strict because it checks if actually the strings you are inserting are JSON, uh, valid JSON documents. Uh, and of course, uh, MariaDB has more or less the same JSON functions as MySQL. Um, the benefits of having a JSON data type uh, like we have in MySQL, um, well, first of all, there may be maybe some uh, benefits in terms of performance. Uh, both MySQL and MariaDB tend to claim that their approach is faster. Um, honestly, I didn't run um, serious benchmarks, but I can say that both approaches have good performance. Uh, of course, the MySQL format is smaller. Um, so, and also when you update a part of a JSON document, so not the whole document, uh, MySQL avoids to rewrite the whole JSON and only rewrites the part that has changed. This also implies that um, there is less output written in the binary log, uh, but only provided that uh, the variable bin log row value option, you can see it uh, written, uh, in the slide, uh, it should be set to partial JSON, which is not the default uh, for backwards compatibility. So if you need to um, consume the, uh, the binary log with some external program, which is not prepared to handle that kind of uh, format, um, you should keep the default. Um, also, in MySQL 8, you should make sure that the default storage engine used for internal temporary tables is Temptable. That is the default, uh, unless maybe you upgrade keeping some old uh, configuration file uh, from version 7. And that is because um, the old um, storage engine used for internal temporary tables in previous versions was memory, which does not support JSON. And as a consequence, uh, when you run a query which needs uh, some internal temporary table, uh, MySQL will need to write that table on the disk, which is slower. Uh, anyway, MariaDB um, doesn't have this variable, but it also doesn't have this problem because memory in MariaDB supports uh, the JSON type. Uh, I mean, simply because it uses uh, strings. Um, okay, so a quick uh, feature comparison. Um, so uh, in uh, Let's compare, of course, MySQL 8, which is the latest um, stable version, and uh, uh, MariaDB 10.5, which is the, not the latest stable version, but the last, latest version. It is still a beta. Um, so MySQL uh, has index on arrays, uh, schema validation using some functions that we will discuss later. The function JSON table, which returns a table um, from a JSON uh, string. And uh, um, the ability of using um, functional indexes or doing something actually equivalent, which is creating a virtual column um, which is based on some JSON um, property, JSON function, and build an index on that column. Um, if you don't understand these things, don't worry, because we are going to discuss them um, during the webinar. Uh, MariaDB doesn't support any of these things, but MariaDB also has some um, 
unit uh, features somehow related to JSON. One is the connect storage engine, which allows us to, for example, seeing a JSON file as a table and run queries on it. Um, and it also supports stored aggregate functions, uh, which I'm not going to cover here, but uh, they can be useful to process some uh, JSON documents. Uh, this will be briefly mentioned later. So uh, let's proceed and let's talk first of all of the possible use cases or if you prefer why it is useful to have JSON in a relational database. So first of all, um, of course, uh, relational databases are schema full, okay? Uh, some people don't like this. That's the reason why a lot of people prefer uh, no SQL, uh, but actually relational databases are still what is used for the generic use case. Uh, so schema full means that first of all, all rows must have exactly the same columns, right? Which means uh, the same columns with the same names and also the same data types. Uh, also, there are check constraints, which can be used um, to validate the contents of a column. And uh, if um, the content cannot be validated uh, when we run an insert, it will fail with an error. Um, you can see a couple of examples in the slide where uh, we validate, for example, an email, or we validate um, that uh, if there are a birth date and a death date, the birth date must be, of course, older. Um, then we have unique constraints, which guarantee that um, a column has uh, unique values. And there are foreign keys, which basically um, guarantee that all rows in a certain columns have a match into another uh, table. So for example, um, it can be used to guarantee that there are no books without authors. So uh, JSON is actually more or less the opposite <laughs> because it is typically schemaless, uh, not necessarily, but usually schemaless. And uh, so in the example um, here, I show two different structures. Uh, so the first case is um, a document representing an email. Uh, the second represents a phone. Um, they could be actually stored in the same column or in the same file, but they are completely different because they may have something in common, like they both have product type and cost. Uh, but for example, the operating system uh, is uh, only for the phone. Uh, shirts typically don't have an operating system. Um, the size exists for both types of objects, but it's different because in the case of shirts, it's just a code, uh, a string, but for fonts, it is actually an array of three numbers. So say that, the natural question is then why should we want to put JSON documents inside a relational table? Okay. Um, and to answer this question, we will use an example. Uh, a typical example is how would we store a heterogeneous um, catalog of products in a relational database? Mm, there are actually some historical ways which we are going to cover. Um, we will discuss them briefly, uh, and none of them is really good. Let's see why. A first solution would be to use uh, a table, uh, a separate table for each product type. So for example, a table for shirts, a table for so phones, and so on. But there are problems. For example, we cannot enforce unique constraints. Uh, for example, um, rows, 
products stored in different tables could have the same name. There is no way to avoid this at database level. And also it's difficult to find a product if we don't know of which type it is or in which table it is stored. We are forced to query all the tables until we find it. It's also difficult to get information like, uh, I don't know, the, um, the cost, uh, the maximum cost for a product made by Yamaha, because maybe Yamaha produces several types of completely different products. So, sorry, I think I skipped. Okay, so another way is to have one table, um, a single table for all the products and have one column for each property that is used by at least one product. Um, and uh, each product, of course, will not use some of the columns. And for that cases, we can put null in those columns. Uh, but this approach also has a lot of problems. So for example, uh, adding a new product type implies that we need to add columns. Uh, so we need to run an alter table, which is probably slow and painful in case the catalog of products is big. Um, also, if a product type is deleted, we should uh, drop the, the columns that are no more in use, uh, running another alter table. But in practice, what I see in real life companies is that those, com those columns remain forever. Uh, so the tables uh, basically blot. Um, of course, a big table is bad for a lot of operations like backups, repair. Uh, also, inserts are more slow because we have to insert a lot of columns every time we insert a row. Uh, if our workload is uh, write intensive, these matters. Also, typically developers uh, will use select star because especially in this case, it is much simpler, but they will select a lot of columns every time. So in this case, also performance uh, is affected. So another, another method is uh, to use one main table with the properties that are used by all products like the cost or product name and uh, a separate table for each product type. Uh, so the separate table will have exactly the right set of columns uh, needed by a product type. But there are still problems um, because every time we need to get all the information about uh, some products. We need to run joins. Uh, so yeah, uh, again, uh, performance will suffer a bit probably and will be less scalable. Um, if you heard about um, entity attribute value pattern, uh, you may think it is a good idea, but in practice it is probably never a good idea because first of all, it implies a crazy amount of joins and also uh, you have a choice. You must store all the data as texts, even if they are numbers, for example, or you have to do something even more complicated uh, to store all the data uh, using the correct data type. Um, I will not explain what entity attribute value pattern is uh, simply because it is a bad idea. This slide is only for people who already know what it is. Um, so basically, oh, another, another method would be using JSON. This is the, uh, the option that we have nowadays. And uh, it's still not perfect, but it's good enough, I think. There are still problems, but the problems uh, can be addressed using the features that we will discuss during this webinar. Um, basically, the idea is very simple. We have a single table and uh, we put um, all properties uh, that are 
used by all products that type. We put them in uh, separate columns, but uh, properties that are specific to a certain um, product type, they are stored as JSON documents in a separate column. So this is an example, maybe it becomes a bit more clear. So in this example, we have a product table, uh, we have of course an ID, we have a type because we need to know of which type the product is, otherwise we don't know what to do with the JSON. Then we have name, cost and quantity, which are um, uh, attributes that uh, are needed by all products type. Uh, but we also have an attributes column which is, is going to uh, contain uh, the JSON uh, documents containing data about specific product types. So uh, starting from this example, let's start to talk uh, about some interesting features. First of all, let's see how to, sorry, how to um, index a property because, for example, um, in the example we shown before, um, a phone has an operating system attribute, but it's stored just as a JSON column. Uh, uh, so queries uh, of type um, select from product, um, where, uh, operating system equals Android, well, those kind of queries will be probably slow unless the table is very small. So we need to add indexes on some JSON um, properties. So let's talk about it, but let's do it by, by steps. Okay, so the first step is we want to simply materialize some properties. Okay, so we have an attributes JSON column, and then we want to add, say, a color uh, column. The color column is actually a virtual column. Um, well, it, it's better to call it a generated column. Um, that you can see from the last word, which is stored. Stored means, uh, okay, Mr. Database, uh, this column I, have, I am creating must be a generated column and it must be stored on disk, okay? Um, but how is it created? Well, we have a property, we have an expression which is, uh, you see those, um, those functions, JSON extract, uh, basically takes the value of attributes, so takes the old JSON, and then it uses um, something called JSON path. JSON path is a language uh, which consists in quite simple, exp uh, quite simple, um, yeah, strings used to identify a part of a JSON document. In this case, uh, we are saying simply mm, the attribute of an object, which is called color, very simple. But the problem is um, this function returns a string and the string will be quoted. So we also need to use um, the, the function JSON unquote. Uh, this is a bit ver verbose. Fortunately, uh, MySQL, but not MariaDB, uh, allows to use a much simpler syntax, which is attributes and then the operator that you see, and then the JSON path expression. Um, it also unquotes the result of the expression in case it is a string. Um, in this case, it is also a generated column, but it is a virtual column. Uh, it means that it is not stored on disk. Um, it is generated on the fly whenever it is needed for a query. Uh, what is the difference? Well, of course, the difference is in terms of performance. 
because a stored column affects performance when you write uh, a new row uh, or modify some values. Um, a virtual column only affects the select. But anyway, we need something more, right? So uh, let's proceed. Uh, and let's see how to create an index. Uh, it is very simple because actually it is just like creating any other index, except we are creating it on a generated column. But there is a note here. Um, MySQL supports creating indexes on both virtual and stored columns. In this case, we prefer to use a virtual column because we are creating the column only because we want to have an index on it. Uh, MariaDB doesn't support indexes on virtual columns. It only supports indexes on stored columns. And as a consequence, we will need to replace virtual with stored. Um, of course, it also means that the, the value of this expression, the color, will be written twice, once for the column, which is stored on disk, and once in the index. Um, so here uh, we see the query. Uh, the first query is the normal query that we would use um, to filter the product by type and color. It is optimized on both MySQL and MariaDB in, in case we created a proper index. Um, the second case, um, we are not using the color uh, column. We are using the expression. It is exactly the same expression on which we based the um, color column. Uh, in MySQL, this is also optimized, uh, meaning that the query will use an index. Uh, but in MariaDB, this will not be optimized. Um, why is this important? Well, it is important in case uh, the application has been written improperly, so developers are actually using this expression. Later, we notice a performance problem and create um, virtual column, we create an index on it, but then we will, if we use MariaDB, we will also need to uh, call the developers and say, okay, you need to uh, fix this query and use the column name instead. And uh, typically um, the relationship between database administrators and developers are not so easy in most companies. Uh, so, <laughs> If this change is not needed at all, it's obviously better. So, okay, here I wanted to show a slightly less complicated example, but it's not really complicated. Uh, as you can see, the difference is that I added a function if. Uh, so basically, if is exactly what it seems. So in case the type of the document, is, sorry, the type of the row is furniture, uh, then the expression will return the color from the JSON uh, document. Otherwise, it will return null. Um, why is this useful? Well, because maybe we want to create an index um, on the colors for the furnitures because we don't need that index for anything else. Okay, so for any other uh, type of product, even if a color column exists, uh, it will not take any space in the index. And the index itself will be a bit faster probably. So, the next thing is how to index JSON arrays. So as you know, probably MySQL and MariaDB both historically don't support arrays. Uh, they don't have a data type for arrays. Uh, we have it, for example, in Postgres or in some other databases. Um, 
so now that we have JSON, of course we can have JSON arrays and use them just like regular arrays. Uh, MySQL 8 um, allows us to index those arrays because it supports an index type called multi-valued indexes. Uh, unfortunately, it's not there in MariaDB. Um, well, it can be useful or also for JSON objects, but this is something that we are not going to discuss in this webinar. Anyway, um, here we can see an example. Uh, so, again, we well, in this case, we have a order table. Um, the order table normally uh, is uh, represents an order pay made by one user, but in one order, typically there may be several products. Okay, so w we can order several products altogether. So typically, this involves creating a separate. Um, a separate table which is relationship between order and uh, products but actually we can simplify that uh, now that we have json arrays so in our example uh, the order table will have a customer id and then an array of all the product ids that have been ordered together and then we can build an index on that column this is very important because if we have many orders without this index, uh, the column would be unusable. So the column is based on an expression. Uh, sorry, the, the index is based on an expression. So it is what MySQL calls fractional indexes. Um, well, the same term exists in other databases also, but uh, mm, well, it was originally used in PostgreSQL documentation, but for some reason, at some point, they changed these and they called them expressional indexes. Anyway, uh, functional indexes, in this case, allow us to create um, an index with this expression, which converts an array JSON into a, a new data type uh, that we called uh, array, unsigned array, just because it is an array of unsigned integers. Uh, so once we have this table, we can run an insert. Uh, you can see the syntax below. And you can see that we are using a very handy uh, function called JSON array. Uh, so we are inserting an array with these elements. Um, so this is the query which uh, basically uses this index. And uh, for example, we are asking which customers um, made an order um, containing the product ID number 20. Uh, you can see that there is this new syntax we can use where uh, value, member of, and then product ID. Um, I'm not sure if this is a standard syntax. Uh, it exists probably only in Oracle currently, um, except that in Oracle it doesn't require parentheses. Um, there are also a couple of other functions that we can use, JSON contains and JSON overlaps. The names are quite clear, but um, it's worth to spend some time to read in the documentation what they do. Uh, we cannot cover them in this uh, quick webinar. So let's talk about relationships. Um, so, well, we can explain this very, very fast because actually we already saw how to create a um, generated column and how to create an index on it. Um, just like we create indexes, we can also create a foreign key. Okay. So, for example, the furniture color column could contain IDs, um, which point to another table called, in this case, furniture color. Um, so, um, please note that 
I'm not suggesting to use foreign keys because they have a lot of implications. So um, they make writes slower. Um, in some case, they propagate logs uh, for the duration of the transaction. Um, they have a lot of limitations, so you can only use them with InnoDB tables. You cannot use them with partitioned tables. Um, so, and also, uh, in the case of MariaDB and MariaSQL, they have a lot of important bugs. Uh, so that is why in the slide I uh, suggest you to Google for this article I wrote, uh, foreign key bugs in uh, MySQL and MariaDB. Uh, but, of course, you can use relationships even without foreign keys. Um, this has a lot of um, benefits because you can easily add extra columns to furniture columns, you can easily change a color name, and so on. So, now um, let's see how to validate JSON documents. Um, so, as we said, both MySQL and MariaDB, starting from 10.4, only accept valid JSON documents uh, in JSON columns. Um, and uh, we already mentioned that uh, we can use uh, check clauses um, to define some rules that determine if a value is valid or not. Um, then MySQL also supports uh, a function called JSON schema valid. What it does is to validate um, the schema we, we pass to the function, sorry, to validate uh, the um, JSON we pass to the function against a schema. The schema must be defined with a language called JSON schema. Uh, for all the details, see jsonschema.org. Um, it is a very powerful language. MySQL uses draft 4. Actually, you can use a later draft if you want. Um, this will not generate any error. And um, of course, the features from the most recent drafts will be ignored. But um, Hopefully, um, uh, later versions of MySQL will implement uh, later versions of JSON schema. Um, so this is the syntax of the function. Uh, as you can see, we pass a schema and we pass a document. Uh, of course, we can use uh, variables or subqueries, as I did in this case. Um, so. Let's see an example. Uh, for the example, um, we want to validate objects of this type. Okay, so we have material, color, and size. We want uh, this data to be, these properties to be validated against uh, very precise rules. And we can do it. We can do it. Uh, we're not going to discuss all the details, but what we are saying is First of all, the JSON must be a JSON object, not just an array, not just a string. Then um, this object can have these properties, material, which must be a string, and it can have only two possible values. The size is an array of numbers, and they must be exactly three numbers. Um, and color must be a string, um, but only uh, material and size are required, so color is optional. If it is passed, it must be a string and not, for example, a boolean. Um, when we do this, uh, it can be tricky sometimes to find out why a certain document doesn't validate. Um, MySQL, fortunately, uh, provides JSON schema, sorry, first of all, uh, provides this feature that um, all the validation errors uh, are warnings. So after calling JSON schema valid, uh, we can run show warnings and we will see all the errors found uh, in the document. 
uh, we can also use JSON schema validation report. Uh, the output will be a JSON document, and the mm, this JSON will contain uh, success or not, and will contain all the errors that have been found. Um, we are going to discuss something that I call default properties. Uh, you cannot find probably this term and anyone anywhere else because it is something that I am using to be uh, hopefully clear. Um, the idea is uh, we can have um, a JSON documents containing some defaults and then we can store uh, all the non-default values in regular uh, JSON uh, documents. Um, I, I read that uh, you can hear, um, yeah, my, my computer fan. I'm very sorry for that, but I'm afraid I cannot avoid it. So uh, again, mm, sorry. Mm, uh, next time I will try to find a way to avoid that. Um, so, why is this useful? Um, it is useful for large JSON objects um, because we store less properties. And uh, it is also useful for objects whose defaults may change over time because if it happens, we can change the default without uh, going through all the objects. So here I show how to do it. Um, I set two um, variables. One contains um, a supposed software configuration for a specific user. And then I have another variable called teamconf having the supposed defaults for the whole team. So the user inherits the defaults uh, used by the team, but it can also overwrite them. Um, how can we do this? Well, we store all these settings in JSONs, and then we use the function JSON merge patch. Um, we pass it first, the team configuration, and then the user configuration. The user configuration will overwrite the team configuration. We can see an example here. So in the team configuration, we have two elements, items per page and suppress warnings. Um, in the user configuration, we only have uh, suppress warnings. So the result of JSON merge patch will be an object containing the items per page from the team configuration and the suppress warnings from uh, the user configuration. So let's see a couple of interesting functions called JSON array ag and JSON object ag, where ag stands for aggregation. So they are available in MySQL 5.7. Initially, MariaDB did not implement them, then probably they received some request to implement them, and they did it in version 10.5, which is still in beta. However, I have to say um, they are quite simple to emulate just using group contact. Oops, sorry, group contact. Uh, group contact is a function uh, typically used with order by, which returns a list. Um, well, it can, we can use it to return something more complex than a list, but typically we use it to generate a comma separated list. Uh, so for example, uh, we can group um, the orders by user ID, and then for each user ID, we can see all the products he ordered, but we can see them, uh, instead of seeing them in separate rows, we can see them as a, a single list using group contact. Um, and uh, also, um, these functions are quite easy to code uh, using MariaDB stored aggregate functions, which are implemented in version 10.3. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, this good feature is not in MySQL. Um, 
anyway, um, let's see what we do. Uh, they're quite simple. Uh, in this case, in this example, I query the product table, I group by product type, and for each product type, I get an array of all the available colors. And as you can see, I get a very nice um, uh, JSON array. Uh, object arg um, is meant for tables uh, that contain some kind of key value. Okay, so in this case, we have a settings table. Um, we have at least two columns, which are variable, the variable name, and then the value. Uh, let's suppose that uh, these are actually MySQL variables. Um, with this query, we will get a single object containing all the, um, uh, all the variables and all the values of the variables uh, stored in the table in a single uh, valid JSON object. Um, this is something that you cannot find in the examples of MySQL documentation, but actually I think uh, it is very interesting because instead of returning several rows, we return a single JSON. Uh, this could be very handy sometimes for developers. Um, here, well, this is just slightly more complex because actually we want to return nested objects. We don't return just the um, value of the variable, but also its type. And the result is what you can see here. Uh, of course, it's abbreviated uh, because otherwise it would be too long. Um, don't worry, again, you will find these slides online after the webinar. Um, so we can also use um, JSON object tag to get one uh, JSON object for each row. Uh, we simply use a group by and uh, we get, we select um, the result of JSON object tag uh, variable value. Okay, and this is what we get. There is also a very interesting, um, very interesting function called JSON table. This is the only table function, meaning that it is a function, but it doesn't return a single value. It returns a whole table. Uh, unfortunately, it's only in MySQL. It's not in MariaDB. I hope to see Mar in MariaDB uh, in the future. It transforms a JSON document into a table. Um, so each property or some of the properties become uh, columns of the table. Uh, the properties are identified by JSON path expressions. So let's see an example. So we have this complex object. It contains uh, a customer's array which is the only part we care about. We don't care about products or orders. And uh, each customer is actually an object with these two, three properties, name, emails, phone. So let's see our example. We are selecting everything from not a table, but the result of JSON table, which is actually a table. Um, we pass JSON table, um, the, um, the JSON um, uh, document, um, the whole JSON document that we saw uh, in the previous slide. We pass a JSON path expression, which basically means all the contents of the array uh, customers. So everything else is ignored. Then we specify the columns. First of all, we have ID for originality. It means that this is a column which will contain just one, two, three, four, and we use it to identify the roles. Um, then we have a name um, column. Uh, we, we, we define the type, Barcar uh, 50. 
Um, and then we use a path expression. In this case, it means the name property. We specify only name. We don't specify customer's name because we specified customers before. Customers is our starting point for our expressions. Um, the next columns are very similar, except we have primary emails because we because we have an array called emails and we select only the first element of the array. Um, I inserted this also to show that actually um, JSON path is probably a bit more powerful than you could think. So it's worth exploring it. Um, the next examples, well, we also um, define some default values in case um, in case the form is not there because it's empty or because there is an error in JSON. So this is the result as expected. Uh, okay, we saw all the MySQL features and all the features that are contained in both MySQL and MariaDB. Um, oh, sorry, just one note. Um, before switching to this, I would like to mention only one thing. JSON table is not really an intended use case for relational databases. It can be very handle, sorry, very handy if you use it for one time operations. For example, you have uh, a JSON and you want to transform it into a table and you create the table and in the future you will al always use this physical table. Um, I wouldn't use it for you know, um, queries that are executed very often and maybe uh, work with big JSON data because the performance will not be uh, as good as you probably hope. Okay, um, again, now we are switching to uh, MariaDB unique features. Um, there is actually only one that I would like to mention here, but it's quite important. Uh, it's the Connect storage engine. So what is Connect? It is a storage engine written for MariaDB. It will not compile on MySQL and will not compile on Percona server because it uses some internal MariaDB only features. Uh, so it's very unlikely that we will ever see it running on MySQL. Um, it reads data from different data sources. So it can read from remote tables, uh, from data files. Well, remote tables actually must not be necessarily MySQL tables. Uh, Yes, it can use the MySQL and MariaDB native protocol, but it can also use ODBC or JDBC standards. So basically it can connect with any relational database. Um, you may have a lot of problems in make, having it working because you may have problems with using the proper drivers or problems with the data types, but in theory, it can connect to any database. Um, then it can also read from data files in various formats. JSON, as mentioned, but also XML, HTML tables, um, CSV files, custom log files. Uh, for example, I used it in the past to use Apache log files as tables. Um, it can also use special data sources, for example, uh, a directory. You can see every file in a directory as a row. And uh, it can also um, show transformed data um, from other tables. So it can be used, for example, to pivotize um, a table or the result of a query. Um, here, I. I've written that Connect reads this data, but it actually can also write this data. Um, it's worth mentioning that all the files, for example, can also be compressed with zip. 
So um, connect can be used to uh, uh, to read JSON files as if they were uh, tables. You have a file, you create a connect table. Um, every property or some properties are seen, are seen as columns, and then you can run regular SQL uh, queries on the file. Um, on Windows, um, it can also read data from a RESTful API. Uh, on Windows, because it uses a Microsoft library for this. Um, it's not something easy to do. You need to write a table type, actually. Uh, you have to write it in C. Um, it's problematic, but it can be done. Um, also, uh, it's worth mentioning here that Connect comes with a set of uh, JSON UDFs. Uh, it means uh, user-defined functions. So they are not built-in functions. They are not installed by default, but you can install them with a simple SQL command. Uh, probably they are not battle-tested as the current built-in functions, but uh, depending on what you do with JSON, well, it could be worth taking a look. So this was the last feature that I wanted to discuss. Um, so, um, first of all, thank you for listening, and I really, really hope that uh, this webinar was useful for everyone. Um, so, if you have questions, uh, please write them below. I see there is one question. Um, Okay, let me see. Fabio asks, the lack of specific JSON type in MariaDB uh, means there is no internal optimization. For... Well, uh, yes and no. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, it means that JSON is stored as a string. Uh, so, for example, it takes more space. But at the same time, MariaDB allows just like MySQL allows you to create um, a generated column on a specific property and then build an index on it. So you still write queries that will use indexes properly. Uh, so if you write your queries properly, they will be fast. So if there are no other questions, I would say that that's all, folks. Um, you will receive um, a final email after the webinar. It will contain a link to the recording of the webinar. Um, hopefully, I say hopefully because I'm new to this platform, but hopefully I will um, put the recording on a YouTube channel also. Um, if you are still in time to ask questions, uh, I will take a look at them later and um, try to answer. So um, don't forget to be subscribed to my um, mailing list or my Telegram channel, because in this way you will be notified when uh, I do the next webinar. Uh, which will happen sometime soon. Uh, so thank you very much for attending. Uh, I see you also thank me. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I, it means you like it. And uh, see you next time and uh, stay safe. Bye-bye.